to Echo Zero Pepper Golf Sierra. This is going to be a sort of video on the couple of different ballasts you can get for the high pressure sodium type bulbs. These are Philips 150 watt high pressure sodiums, and what I've got here is a ballast. Now, this one's um, a dimmable digital ballast, and this one's a non dimmable digital ballast. These are made by Philips as well. Um, these normally go inside the lamp. Um, so these are the control gear that go inside the high pressure sodium street lights, depending on what type you get. But uh, it's a gear, so there's a little bit more in here than just a ballast, but it technically is really a ballast. Well, there's a couple of other things in there, some capacitors and whatnot, but um, and of course the digital dimming circuitry if you've got a digital dimmer for one but these are both digital ballasts so there's some sort of switching uh, going on rather than a huge resistor um, but yeah, made by Philips these are very cool because uh, this one here, this one in particular this is a 0 to 10 volt uh, sorry, 1 to 10 volt dimmable so it takes a 1 to 10 volt uh, control line so the way that works if you've got a 1 to 10 volt is essentially when you connect these two together and you short them out it will dim all the way down to the lowest uh, but maintainable um, light level it, can't, it has to dim it down to a certain light level any lower and the bulb will stop uh, running so it needs to keep it as low as it can go while the gas still remains conductive um, when you short these out and then when you open them up it will go as bright as it goes and you can sort of vary in between with some sort of you can pulse it modulate the connection between the two but essentially it's either a short open circuit or somewhere in between um, and it just uh, it just makes a connection between these two so you're just completing a circuit really so you can do what you want with that maybe a MOSFET PWM switching to get a 50% duty cycle etc then you've got your mains input, 240 volt mains. It's uh, really AC, it, it doesn't care too much which way around those go because it's AC. And then you've got an earth, so everything goes in there. And you've got your output, so output, and it's got a high, a high starting voltage of a few uh, thousand volts to strike the uh, strike it up, and then uh, once it's striked gas is uh, conductive and it can uh, go down to normal operating voltages. But this is uh, a Philips HID Dynavision but this is a 1 to 10 volt which is a bit different you can get DALI ballast as well which is digital addressable lighting interface or something like that. I'll have a separate video on DALI stuff later but uh, these Philips, the older gears sometimes they remove the documentation online once they are no longer uh, in production. And this is made in Poland which is interesting. Um, so here I've just got the control line coming out and I've shorted those together to put on lowest brightness setting. Now let's go over to this one. This is the HID Prima Vision electronic gear. Um, again 150 watt ballast. Mains input, earth and then your output and it specifies a slightly higher maximum of 5 kV starting voltage by the looks of it um, but this one's digital as well but there's no control for dimming it just does uh, maximum it's a little bit smaller and it's in a metal casing whereas this one here is in a sort of plasticky casing it's probably metal underneath but this one weighs a lot more because it's got the extra circuitry this one's quite light um, and there's the bulb that's another Philips bulb I believe, yep, another Philips 150 watt HPS high pressure sodium. What I like about these uh, ballasts is this sort of uh, very nice um, connector. It's simple, you just push these down, and you push on the top, you just press these down, and then you put the wire in, and then it clamps it when you release. So, very easy wiring. This is a bit different, this is a sort of lever, so you push it back and it levers and then it's the same sort of thing but this one just goes straight down anyway nice terminal connection so I'll fire, uh, I'll fire up the dimmable one 
Um, so I'm just going to put this piece of paper over because I've always, well I'll, I'll try about the piece of paper but I'm sure it'll be too bright on camera. So. Plugging it in now. I'm going to watch my eyes. So I'll make a few different noises as it starts. I'm going to look through the camera because otherwise once it starts to heat up you can see it changing colour temperature now once it starts to heat up it will get very bright so it sort of starts at a cold colour then it comes up to a yellow and then as it gets very hot it will start to go back to a more white this is now getting very bright I can't look at that with my bare eyes and you probably shouldn't either With a welding mask, I can uh, look at it, which isn't really something you can do with LEDs because the LEDs don't produce enough uh, ultraviolet for the uh, welding mask to uh, dim. If you've got an automatic uh, welding mask, I'm just going to try to put my shielding over. makes it a little bit easier. So this is now running at maximum. It's going to warm up. So it starts it, it strikes the tube, then it goes up and warms it up, gets up to maximum brightness. And then what will happen is once it gets warm and it's happy and it draws a known current, it will then start to drop down in steps the brightness and dim it down. So we'll wait for this to dim down. Um, which take a while, so this will just have to get happy, and then it will start dimming down. Once see, this is now, this is still getting brighter at the moment. It's still getting very much brighter. I'm gonna turn the lights up in this room. And my camera isn't wanting to zoom. This is actually lighting up the entire room. It's very hot, you don't want to touch that bulb. You'll get third degree burns. The in inside of the bulb, the inner, you may get one of these broken bulbs here. This one's a broken bulb, so I can touch it all I like. You don't normally want to get too much grease on these bulbs uh, if it's a functional bulb, because you get hot spots um, when it's in operation. But this is a broken one. The inner um, glass tube there is uh, extremely hot. Um, that's why you get a certain lux color temperature. But the outer uh, glass is also very hot, enough for third degree burns. So. Yeah. So these this uh, these ballasts, when they're running at full power, will actually be very efficient, and it will draw 150 watts off the mains. So you'll get 150 watts off the mains, um, and it will put out a ton of light. It's very efficient lighting, especially with the digital ballasts. So we're still waiting for this to start to drop down. I think it's almost beginning to to want to uh, drop down in brightness. I think while that's happening, I'll just fire up the other one. It's a slightly different sound with the other one. Ah, I'm running out of plug sockets. I could run it on the. Let's see if I got any more plug sockets. I have just covered the microphone a bit there. So this one's given off. It's taking a while to start, it's quite cold. So 
So I've got two 150 watt lamps running now. Again, I'm not looking into this bulb. I'm looking through the camera's uh, LCD display. So it's not even a viewfinder, it's an LCD display. So the iris on the camera is taking the brunt. This is a ceramic uh, Edison E11 screw, if I remember correctly. A ceramic holder because these bulbs get that hot. So this one on the right is making a little bit more noise. The one on the left has not started dimming yet. What I'll do is I'll actually show you the street light that these are, uh, the sort of street light bulkhead that these are normally in. This is a Philips Iridium. So, this is the actual bulkhead that one of these would, one of these ballasts would go inside. And you've got the reflector, the glass. This is a mounting bracket. You can also mount it from. You can go in from the uh, from the rear, or you have it mounted vertically. This bulb is now starting to dim. You might be able to notice the steps as it goes down in brightness. I don't know how easy that is to see on camera. It's definitely dimming. Yeah, you can kind of tell on camera, the background's getting a bit darker. It's dimming down. There's a sort of, you can, in person you can see a, a blink as it goes down in brightness. I think we're at its lowest brightness now. So it's a little bit darker in here. It's running at its lowest brightness. Which is, it's a little bit more yellow when it's running at lower brightness. These do get um, quite warm after a while when you leave them running. You kind of want a bit of air underneath for a bit of heat sink. Uh, normally they're inside this big metal chassis. So What I'll do is I'll flip this over and I'll show you a bit of the inside. I've turned on the overhead light to get a bit more light back in here because this is running at its lowest brightness level now. What you do is you pop this little latch which is made of metal this bit here is made of some plastic probably some sort of fiberglass reinforced plastic this lifts up there's a little catch in the back there's your reflector and you've got the glass there you've got the ceramic bulb holder and under here is where all the control gear sits. Currently I've got uh, them on the bench. That comes up like that. That's a nice piece of uh, heat resistant cable there. Covered in some sort of silicon. And this part lifts up. And in here is all your connections. This is a connector block. This is a removable connector. Normally you have your cables go in. And then they come in here, your mains cable and your control. And that just plugs in. Down here is where the, ball the uh, ballast control gear would normally be mounted on this big metal plate with these screws there. And that's where that sits. So a nice serviceable, easy to access uh, system. And that sits in there. Probably have a separate video when this is actually uh, mounted somewhere. There's your reflector. You can adjust the reflector's uh, angle. 
so how much you want it to uh, throw the light forward when it's uh, vertically mounted. You'll be throwing the light forward in front of the light so normally it's, over, it's covering our road. And then to release there's a little latch back here, a bit like a car bonnet. Doing that one handed is quite tricky. Comes down, there's big waterproof seals and that clicks into place. So that is a video on the ballasts and uh, a little bit of information. I'll have a separate video on DALI lighting because you can, the newer ones of these are DALI controlled so it's all digital addressable lighting protocols and such like. But this is a 0 to 10 and that's a non-dimmable. So thanks for watching guys.